Then lastly, we need to look at the calculation for convertible preference shares. So with convertible preference shares, once again, the company needs to raise money, so they issue the preference shares, and when they do that, it's obviously a cash inflow for the company. Dividends are being paid at regular intervals, and that is a cash outflow for the company. And then after a certain period of time, the preference shares are going to convert either at the option of the company or the investor. And we show this as a cash outflow in our calculations. Now, if you are dealing with a convertible preference share, you are going to break your calculation down into two steps. First, you are going to calculate the future value of each alternative. And after you've calculated the future value of each alternative, you're going to select the alternative. And the selection depends on whether the preference shares are convertible at the option of the company or the investor. If they are convertible at the option of the company, you are going to select the alternative with the lowest cost, because if it was at the option of the company, they would go for the option that was cheapest for them. However, if it is convertible at the option of the investor, you need to select the alternative with the highest value, because obviously if it's at the option of the investor, they are going to select what's most beneficial for them, or the alternative obviously with the highest value. Then after you've determined the future value of each alternative and what alternative either the company or the investor is going to choose, in step two, you then calculate either the market value or the cost of the preference shares. All right, let's go and have a look at an example. Lannister Limited has 500,000 two rand preference shares in issue with a coupon rate of 12%. So if they have 500,000 two rand preference shares in issue, that gives us a nominal value of 1 million rand. And if they have a coupon rate of 12%, Remember, we use the coupon rate in order to calculate our dividend cash flow. The preference shares are convertible. So we are dealing with a convertible preference share in this example. They are convertible into ordinary shares at a rate of one ordinary share for every eight preference shares. And this is in four years' time, and it's at the option of the holder. So it's at the option of the preference share holder or the investor. So if it's at their option, they are going to select the alternative with the highest value. Preference shares not converted will be redeemed at a premium of 8%. Preference shares in a similar risk class are yielding 14% per annum. So if that is the rate on preference shares in a similar risk class, that is going to be the cost of the preference share, which we'll use as our discount rate when calculating the market value. The last dividend declared was 95 cents per share, so that is D0. Lannister Limited expects annual growth in dividends of 10% per annum, and this is forecast to continue for the foreseeable future, and the cost of equity is 15% you need to calculate the market value of the preference shares. So the cost of the preference shares has been given, and you need to calculate the market value. So wherever you have a convertible preference share, you're going to break your calculation down into two steps. In step one, we are going to calculate the future value of each alternative. So in this example, they are convertible in four years' time at the option of the holder. So if they are convertible in four years' time, we are going to calculate the future value of each alternative in four years' time. Now there are two alternatives. Either the preference shares are going to convert into ordinary shares, or they are going to be redeemed at a premium of 8%, because the preference shares that are not converted will be redeemed at a premium of 8%. So there's two different alternatives over here. Let's look at the easier alternative first. If the preference shares do not convert into ordinary shares, they will be redeemed at a premium of 8%. So we saw the rand value of the preference shares is 1 million rand, 2 rand each times 500,000 preference shares. If they are redeemed at a premium of 8%, they will be redeemed for 1,080,000 rand. 
So the preference shares that don't convert into ordinary shares will be redeemed. And that is the future value of that alternative. However, they might also convert into ordinary shares. So we need to calculate the future value of this alternative. So what will the ordinary shares be worth in four years' time? We know that we can use Gordon's dividend growth model to calculate the market value or the present value of our ordinary shares. Now, we are not trying to calculate the present value of the ordinary shares today. We are trying to calculate the present value of the ordinary shares in four years' time. So we are trying to calculate the present value in four years' time. So that means we can't use D1 in our calculation. If we are trying to calculate the value in four years' time, we need to use D5 in this calculation. Because remember, the logic is that this always jumps back one year. Okay, so let's calculate D5. We were given D0 because the last dividend declared was 95 cents per share. So D0 is 95 cents per share. And Lannister Limited expects annual growth in dividends of 10% per annum. So we need to increase this by 10% per annum in order to calculate D5. So first increase it by 10% to get D1. Increase it by 10% to get D2. By 10% to get D3, D4, and D5. You can see. Increase it by 10% each year so that you get D5. That's D5. The cost of equity is 15%, and they expect growth, which will continue for the foreseeable future, so growth in perpetuity at a rate of 10%. So using Gordon's dividend growth model, we can calculate what those shares will be worth in four years' time. Not today, because if we use D5 in the calculation, it gives us the value in four years' time. So the shares will be worth 30 rand and 60 cents in four years' time. Now we were told that the preference shares will convert into ordinary shares at a rate of one ordinary share for every eight preference shares that are held. So there are currently 500,000 preference shares in issue. So if they convert at a rate of one ordinary share for every eight preference shares held, they will convert into 62,500 ordinary shares. So 62,500 ordinary shares will be worth 30 rand and 60 cents each in four years' time, giving you a total value of 1,912,500. And obviously, guys, once again, if there are any rounding differences in your calculation, rounding differences will be marked through. So whenever you have a convertible preference share, first you calculate the future value of each alternative. The one alternative is they'll convert into ordinary shares in four years' time. If they convert into ordinary shares in four years' time, that is what they will be worth. The other alternative is they will be redeemed at an 8% premium. In that case, that is what they'll be worth. In this question, we saw that this was at the option of the holder, so the holder will select the alternative with the highest value. So, the highest value is obviously converting into ordinary shares, so the shareholders would select the alternative with the highest value. In other words, they would opt for conversion. They would not take the lower value of redemption. Step one is done. In step two, we can now answer the required and calculate the market value of the preference shares. So using the cash flow function on your financial calculator, let's calculate the market value. Please note, guys, in four years' time, we said they are going to select the option to convert into ordinary shares because that was the highest value. So this is what it's worth in four years' time. That's what these ordinary shares will be worth in four years' time. So that is the future value in your calculation. So you'll see if you use the cash flow function on your financial calculator, we show that as an outflow in column 4, or if you use the shortcut, that is your future value. So because the shareholders would select conversion, you take the conversion amount, and that is the future value, or the value in year 4. We calculated that that is what those shares would be worth in 4 years' time.
However, for the next four years, the company will still pay dividends on these preference shares. So we know that there's a coupon rate of 12%. So let's calculate what the dividend will be for the next four years on these preference shares before they convert into ordinary shares. Remember, you use the RAND value over here, the million RAND. Use your coupon rate to calculate your dividend cash flow. That's the dividend cash flow for the next four years before the preference shares convert into ordinary shares. If you use the shortcut, that is obviously the payment on your financial calculator. You can then total all of your cash flows, input all of the cash flows into your financial calculator. We were given the cost of the preference shares, remember, Here's the cost of the preference share. You use the cost as your discount rate when you are calculating the market value. You don't use this to calculate your dividend cash flow. So the cost is 14%. Use that as your discount rate when calculating the market value. So use the cash flow function on your calculator to get the market value. Or alternatively, if you use the shortcut, N is obviously 4 that is your cost of your preference shares. Use the cost of the preference share as your discount rate when calculating your market value. In this question, because these annual cash flows here are equal, you can also use the shortcut. Now please note, just one important thing before we move on. These cash flows above were discounted using the cost of the preference share, using 14%. We discounted those cash flows at 14% to get the value today, the market value or the present value. And this is because the preference shares will still be preference shares for the next four years. They'll be preference shares for four years and then they'll convert into ordinary shares. Oh, sorry. They'll be preference shares for the next four years and then they'll convert into ordinary shares. So from year five onwards, they will be classified as equity because they'll convert into ordinary shares. So in the long term, they'll be classified as equity. So you'll see right at the end of this lecture, when we get to our WAC calculations, when calculating the weighted average cost of capital, you are not going to use the cost of the preference share in that calculation. You won't use 14%. You're going to use the cost of equity in that calculation because your WAC calculation is a long-term calculation. And in the long term, the preference shares are going to convert into ordinary shares. So in the WAC calculation, we use the cost of equity not the cost of the preference share. However, in this calculation over here where we are calculating our market value, you don't use the cost of equity. Over here you use the cost of the preference share. You'll see that when we actually get to our WAC calculation at the end of this lecture.